everyone. We're at Operation Alpha here, and we are celebrating everything that HVAF does to give back and take care of our veterans here. And with me is Katie, and if you were watching the event live, you heard that she is the rock of HVAF. When you come in the door, you always see Katie there. So Katie, tell us about some of the things that HVAF does. Well, we, let's see, we have several different programs that we're involved in. We have transitional housing, we have permanent housing, we have our food and clothing pantry on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11.30 to 2.30 where our veterans can come in and get those winter gear. It's starting to get cold outside, so they're able to come in and get that winter gear that they're needing. And socks and undergarments are really in high demand, especially as it gets colder, so please donate those. You'll see Katie, you can drop them off. And Katie, tell me about what makes you want to be a part of HVAF. And every time I've seen you in there, you have such a positive energy, and it is hard work, you know, and you're hearing about people going through really tough times. What do you get out of it, and what makes you want to stay and continue the work that you do? My family. I have an uncle that did 35 years in the military. I have a dad that did 12. So my, my father figures in my life always have me going forward, doing it a little extra. Every helping hand helps. So I just feel like if I do a little bit to help this person, when they get on their feet, they'll be able to help someone else. So I try to do my best to make sure that every veteran that comes in our building is able to get some service, if not just resources. And I was doing a ride along with Rodney um, maybe a year or two ago. And while we were driving, someone honked and yelled out the window. And it turned out it was a veteran who had been helped by HVAF. Now he had his own car, he was working, he had his own apartment, taking care of his family, and he was doing great. How does it make you feel when you see, because you see people when they come in and they're at you know, one of the hardest parts in their life, and then when you see them succeed, how does that make you feel? I feel like as if the little things that I have done was able to bring that veteran to the point where they're able to be willing to come in and get those services through us, it makes us feel ecstatic. It makes us feel happy, warm, that we're able to help a vet, you know, get back on his feet, connect with his family, and be able to do those things that he used to do before he came on hard times. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share about HVAF or the work that you do? or? If you're talking to people now who can go on and donate at HVAF.org, what would you tell them? Why should they donate? Yeah. Every veteran is in need. Every veteran. If it's just a listening ear or it's just a hug or a smile in the morning. To be kind to one person is to be kind to ten. So just help one veteran. That means you'll be helping at least ten. God bless you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys saw that. HVAF.org. You can give back. People like Katie are the rocks of this organization. They're the people that, you know, a lot of the veterans, when I've spoken to them, when they said when they first came in, they felt they were invisible. They felt that no one heard them or saw them. But people like Katie, people like Lauren, who's behind here <laughs> holding the camera, people like Ashley, these are the people that are the rocks of this organization that remind the veterans that we are a grateful nation, that we are grateful for everything they have done for us servicemen and service women. So give to HVAF.org. You can click on the pop-up link there. Every little bit counts. We've raised over $37,000 so far, but you can keep giving. And check us out later. We'll be uh, smoking cigars. <laughs>
now everyone's having their cigar and their drinks out here. The weather's still kind of nice for that. And there's coats. <laughs> Why don't you forgive all the utilities? <laughs> they didn't go to the bank and say, why don't you forgive their payments? You're about to do Facebook Live. Yeah, you're going to smack camera. All right, what am I about to do and why? Um, well, I'm just going to ask you, what did you think? How did it go tonight? Thirty Over $37,000. And I would attribute all credit to Bernie Cruz as the master of ceremonies and everyone's secret but deeply held desire to hear him sing Roxanne at the end of the evening. I mean, I think that's what pushed us over the top. What do you think of that rendition? Yeah. What yeah, did that's, you just, that's a working theory. What, what, what I watched that unfold, though, and I was fascinated because that's just kind of the way things happen. And so I may or may not be here next year. I likely, even if I'm not with the agency, I'm probably going to show up here and, you know, yes. drink, drink whiskey and smoke cigars. But clearly now, Bernie has set the bar, established a new standard that when we succeed, we're all going to celebrate with the singing of Roxanne. <laughs> it will it will forever be associated with our with our success tonight. I hear that's his go-to karaoke song. So so were you prepared for that rendition tonight? Did you know what it was going to sound like? I have heard Bernie present that on many occasions. Um, honestly, not nearly as skillfully as he delivered it tonight. So, but he. He had to moderate his alcohol intake because he was the master of ceremonies. Uh, but I suspect if we asked him 20 minutes from now, it, we would get a different version of that than, than we got just now. And no, what, what a great evening. What a great evening that we were able to achieve our goal. Um, and and our, our team talks about not only a fundraiser, but really, I think, more importantly, a friend raiser. All of the folks here clearly directly support our effort, our cause to support homeless and at-risk veterans. But every person here tonight is part of another network. They have networks of neighbors, of friends, of church family, of co-workers, wherever they are. And the impact of who we are and what we do propagates in ways that we simply can't predict, but that we know are gonna have beneficial effects to our agency. And what does that $37,000, how is that going to help HVAF? What kind of things do you guys do to kind of summarize some I of the amazing I tell folks programs? when I have the opportunity to speak to groups and tell our story about who we are and what we do and who we serve, when they ask how we can help, I answer without hesitation, shame, or reservation, money. One size fits all. It's always the right color. If you can't do that, for us, in-kind donations, food, clothing, hygiene items, and because of the type of agency we are and the number of properties that we operate, we can take a much wider array of donations than the average nonprofit because we need household goods, we need furniture, we need appliances, either to refresh the properties we operate or when our clients, when our veterans are able to achieve a degree of self-sufficiency, move into a place of their own, we want to equip them to the extent we can for basic housekeeping. So we're able to take a very wide array of donations that a lot of nonprofits would not be able to. If they can't do that, I say volunteer your time and energy. With all the properties we support, there's always inside and outside projects to be done. And if you can't do any of those things, just spread the word about who we are and who we serve. And you can also donate products. There's a planting product. They have volunteer dogs that are coming for one of the housing. There's so many different ways that your company and organization can help as well. And I know when we were together last time, someone donated a car. And the veteran that was receiving that car, mm -hmm. they said the first thing he said he was going to do was to go pick up an extra shift. Absolutely. <laughs> they called him that morning and asked if he could take a shift that afternoon because he now had independent freedom of movement with his own transportation he was able to capitalize on that shift and immediately improve the quality of his life and that's just exactly about the type of work hvaf does housing job help it's things that veterans need to get their foot up back up on the table and get out there and they they're ready they're ready they'll take it and they'll go and it's sustainable change we are blessed with an extraordinary team of dedicated and passionate professionals who are keenly attuned 
to those opportunities to be able to capitalize, and they are always focused on what's best for the veteran. Uh, if in doubt, serve the client. Do what's best for them. Don't get hung up in, in bureaucracy and programmatic requirements. If in doubt, serve the veteran, take care of their needs. And you have been a great leader for this organization. I know I met someone who served under you in Afghanistan, and he was trying to build a house for a veteran that had nothing in his home. He was up in Muncie, mm. and he did that. And when I mentioned your name, he just said, that's you know some, a real leader. What words would you like to say about your time with HBAF <laughs> and, and your legacy that you have left here? I, I would say it has never, ever been about me. It has always been about developing the team, contributing to the team. As long as you focus on the mission, take care of the members of the team, and try to make the organization better, you, you will succeed. It is never, it should never ever be about the leader. It should always be about the mission. It should always be about the team. And so when I talk about if in doubt, serve the client, that's a tone, that's an expectation. It sets a culture for my case managers. I don't, I don't want them worried about some set of rules that I've cobbled together. I want a guiding principle that informs their professional judgment that says, if in doubt, do what's best for that client. And, and that's contagious. And that sort of a legacy self-propagates. And, and I hope, and I'll be humbled if that continues after I'm gone, that that focus on serving the client, on meeting the needs of the veteran in that moment is carried on long after I'm gone. Well, sir, I've seen the work that you guys have done since I've been here, and I can tell you firsthand, I'm sure it will continue, and you have succeeded. I've seen the lives that you guys have changed here firsthand, and that's what makes me so passionate about this organization. So, you know, <laughs> Sir, <laughs> you're, accomplished. you are gracious to say so. I appreciate it's it. True. Kind words of affirmation and encouragement are always welcome and appreciated, but my focus has been and will remain in my last few months investing in and developing the skills and the talents and the passions of those that are on the team with me and, and, and Emmy, the new CEO. And, and I don't claim any particular credit for her skills, her talent, her passion, or who she is, but I recognize that early on and I have sought to cultivate and nurture that um, and, and invest in her that show She's the right leader for the for the next season of HVAF helping veterans and families. Everything you said speaks volumes of the type of culture HVAF is, the type of culture we have among our service members, and it's a family. At the end of the day, it's family. So giving to HVAF is giving to our American family and taking care of our own, which we should always do. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Head to HVAF.org. Any amount, every amount counts and makes a difference in the lives of the men and women who have risked their lives for our country, whether they've been deployed or not. Every veteran is a veteran. And we thank you all for our, your service. Matters. Thank you. Good night.